Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money, and I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going. And what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny. And we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreonic special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash kryptonreport. Part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue. Today we're trying something different. I'm trying to work on this new video recording tech thing I got here. So what we're new is <clears throat> it's, you know, time to reflect. And with the flash ending, it's bringing it into the Arrowverse as people, the modern Arrowverse, you know. And also you have Titan and Doom Patrol both ending, which connected to the Arrowverse. Superman and Lois is the last remnant of the Berlanti verse, what I always called it, because he was the producer over all the shows. Um, so what we're looking at with Gotham Knights premiering and having its pilot, we're looking at what makes a great pilot. And what we're going to do is we're going to rank from Smallville to now the pilot episode of every DC-based comic show. I have my tier maker up. I will share uh, <clears throat> the link in the show notes and let's get going here there's no particular order they should all be here <clears throat> and we're just going to kind of rank them as they got dropped into here and we're going to go from there so let's do this are you ready so first up is we have gotham now the pilot for gotham i'm going to rank an a it was an interesting premise um probably the best depiction i think of the wayne's murder as far as how bruce wayne himself acts and it definitely opened up the show now we know that the show went to a lot of crazy places and <clears throat> it's interesting to see going back you know the pilot's hard the pilot's always like what you know what we want from a pilot our engine what's the show based on how do we see the show keep going are we hooked is it a mystery is it does it feel too self-contained, too one and done? And that's kind of the, some of the factors of what makes a great pilot. Are we interested? And some of these shows was going to be interesting because they're kind of spin-offs. And how does that work? Constantine, almost a forgotten series, people. Almost. Uh, it got kind of retconned into the <clears throat> the Berlantiverse, and it's interesting. But I'm going to rank Constantine's a uh, B. And I do that because it's a great pilot. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting how they bring him in, set him up. We, we kind of come in a moment later when there's already been a lot of back history, which is great for establishing story. But the problem is there's so much in the pilot that by the second episode, they've changed. Like the main character that we thought we were going to follow with John, she's gone. And we're just left. So it's kind of weird that we feel like we get this great setup and a great pilot, but doesn't really spawn the whole series that we thought it was. So I give it a B. Um, for some reason, my Lucifer did not import. And for Lucifer's pilot, I'll give it a, uh, an A as well. So just mark that down. Sometimes, I don't know why, when you're making Tear Maker, it doesn't always import all your artwork. Um, so just mark that down. My bad. Krypton pilot. I'll give it an A. I rewatched it recently. It was um, interesting. Because with Krypton... 
it set up the story well with Adam Strange. You got to know the world through Say. You got kind of interested, but then it gave you that hook of the ticking clock right off the bat. So it was it was good. Um, another one that didn't import was Watchmen. That is a uh, super. But that is a series that is <sighs> that's some stuff. <laughs> Let's go to Pennyworth. Pennyworth, I'll give a B. <laughs> Excuse me. Sinus is drying out. It's spring. Pennyworth, it was an interesting series. I hate that it is being canceled because they set up some interesting things and then kind of dropped us off. But the pilot was really strong, and I hope that we would be able to continue to get more from Pennyworth in the future. But uh, the, it's a good series. It's a good series. And the ones that I'm picking now are kind of like not their core Arrowverse here. So let's go Sandman. I, Sandman, pilot-wise, I'll give it an A um, or a B. I can't, I can't uh, really figure it out. So I'll, what do you, it was always kind of the, I feel like the most interesting part of the book that you had to get through um, to really appreciate the series. And it works really strong, so I'll give it an A. All right, the next one we have here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Mm, powerless. We'll go with Powerless. Uh, a B. It just didn't quite feel like it settled where it needed to be. It wasn't the show that everyone had really been promised. And that's kind of what happens is we get told we're going to get a show. It was supposed to connect to the series that was going on on TV or on the, on the film universe. <clears throat> and this was, we were supposed to get a series that was going on about the film universe. And what we got was a really commonly drawn out where we got a forced character of Van Wayne and it went more Batman 66 style. And it just kind of, it just, it, I don't know lost me i i didn't feel it i didn't feel it all right granddaddy of them all i was gonna save this but i think it's time to bring it in what do you guys think smallville super directed by david nutter the pilot king just an an amazing just an amazing uh pilot it, it set up everything we need to know we know who clark is we have the mystery we saw how he got here how he was discovered we saw him start stop the first uh, kryptonite infected person everything that we needed to see was in that pilot to kind of bring us back like you could have said oh it's a one and done but it, it gave you if it had just been that pilot you're like okay you're satisfied but at the same time you could have kept going and that's what happened for 10 more years and as I said when I started the video was you know this is from Smallville now because Smallville really kicked off the comic book trend and set the template for everything to come. There are shows that were before Smallville and maybe we'll get into those another day. And some of them, it's harder to find to actually be able to watch the pilot. And since we're just kind of focused on the pilot, we just started with Smallville. Okay. <clears throat> um, da, da, da. So now we're kind of more in Arrowverse proper. Yeah. So Arrow, pilot. A. Um, when Arrow came out, it was <clears throat> described a little bit more as, you know, Green Arrow and more like Christopher Nolan's set type universe. Very grounded, very real. The first two seasons of Arrow are amazing. They're the best the show ever produced. Um, the pilot really set up everything we need to know about Oliver Queen. And it's hard to judge the pilot based on where the series goes and what it does. But I highly, highly recommend the pilot as a strong presence. A um, couple of points that are in there that people argue about is about the brutality that Oliver has. It's Green Arrow and a little bit more of the darker, serious version of the character that he is. But it's a great start for a show about a character discovery. <clears throat> Moving forward. Birds of Prey. That one slipped in here. Um, This... I'm going to go with a C, but maybe a B. Um, it's an okay pilot, 
it's it's it sets up our characters. I would have liked a little bit more in depth with some of the the characters that we go through. But what I feel is this pilot's very similar to Constantine, where there's certain elements that are in it that get ditched by the second episode. Um, not as much as Constantine did, by the way. Also, you're, like, you're buying into a whole new world. Like, this is Neo. Was it New Gotham? Yeah, or Neo Gotham. Get them confused with Batman Beyond. And, you know, we find out Batman's gone, Joker, Batgirl's from Paralyzed. There's a lot that goes into it that we feel like we're getting dropped in. <clears throat> and even as someone who knows the comics more so than a lot of people, trying to figure out where you are, and, you know, we have this Alfred Pennyworth narration at the beginning about Catwoman and Batman's daughter. I just feel like it could have been a little bit stronger. Um, Black Lightning's pilot is an A. The first season of, especially the pilot, <coughs> excuse me, was developed for Fox. And there's a little bit more of that flavor in the first season than in the pilot. It makes it a little bit stronger, a little bit more mature content than where the series goes. And I think had the show stayed on Fox, I would have definitely gotten into some deeper, darker, more relevant subject matter. And it's kind of sad that it was not able to. Batwoman, the pilot, I'll give a C. This show was weird because we were introduced, it was a spinoff, and it wasn't a, really a backdoor pilot. Um, we were introduced to this character in Elseworlds. And then we did the pilot, and they didn't do anything in the first, you know, in the and then the pilot, the first season led into Crisis, and nothing was done in the in the series to make us feel like the pilot episode and a couple of things happened before we were introduced to the character, um, in the crossover before we got the Crisis. So it was very mismanaged. It was, there was a lot of questions and confusions, like why do we need the crows, like. What happened to Gotham Police? Like, it just felt like we were in a very confused area and we weren't being built groundwork for a show that they were trying to feel like it was a spinoff, but you didn't do the groundwork to make us feel like we were connected to the world. And all these are <clears throat> my opinions and my thoughts. We can debate, we can talk, whatever. It's all good. Uh, Legends, I, I gave a B for the pilot. It started okay. Um... And I feel like, you know, they're going after Vandal Savage. We had our team and it was weird because they had filmed all that footage for like the legends that they were just filler footage for an advertisement before they actually filmed the series. So I give it a B, maybe a C. I just think legends could have been, legends could have been like the strongest show out of all of them. Could have been like the greatest hits and they just got stuck in their rut and stayed there. Doom Patrol. What do y'all think? I'm gonna go B. It's not that it's bad. I think it's a slow burn. It was it was slow introduction, building these characters. You know, at first Doom Patrol felt like it was a spinoff from Titans, but it wasn't. It's its own Earth that's later established. And so what we had already kind of established with these characters is not true. That what we knew. And I felt like we could have really got into this a little better. And it was interesting. I remember, you know, when, when a pilot ends, you're like, <clears throat> do I want to start the next episode right away? What's going on? And I felt like with Doom Patrol, yeah, I wanted to see what happened, but I was like, I was interested, but I wasn't there up front. All right. So moving on. What we got? Kind of was holding this one, but we got the Flash. Ah, uh, super. You know, the Flash, what's interesting is the Flash's pilot is kind of a retcon. Because we see Barry become the Flash in Arrow. And it ends. And then we get a, an episode later um, in Arrow where we see other characters why Barry's in the coma. But then when the Flash pilot happens, it's supposed to like kind of take Bass back. But it doesn't match up exactly with the events of Arrow. So it is kind of its own pilot, its own thing. And it is great. There are some things in the pilot I wish the series had continued. The biggest one is Barry Moore of the crime scene investigator, CSI. 
I wish they had done that a little bit more before they just got stuck in Star Labs all the time. It's a great scene of him coming to a crime scene and figuring things out. Once again, David Nutter, he's the man. Um, this is a great A pilot. It's super, you know, S tier super pilot. So it's a grade A S tier super pilot. It was awesome. Titans, ah, B. It was a little darker, a little unexpected. Trying to build the story. A little, uh, you know, where are we going with this? Establishing the characters. And it was okay. You know, it was more mystery, but maybe not in the best of ways. So... Supergirl, A, the CBS, you know, first season is, has a different flavor than what we'll come to, but it has all the elements of being fun, interesting, uh, where it's going to go, who the characters are, establishing the world, and I would definitely recommend this pilot. It's a, recently I revisited it a couple times for different things, so I would, I bring that back home. Swamp Thing, <clears throat> B. Or A. Tough. I'm going to go B. I felt like there's a lot that's in this. I mean, it does end with the hook of Alec Holland. And maybe, you know what, maybe it is. We'll just lean towards A. It was a good show. And I hate that this is the show that was really good, really high quality. That they cut it up and edited it for, it's on CW app, or it was on CWC, but I just recently learned the CWC app is no more, so it's on CW, I haven't checked in a while. But this one did not make it to the HBO migration. This one got, it just kind of disappeared. And I, when, I want to own it on Blu-ray. I'm so lucky I bought it on DVD at a Black Friday thing, because it is a show that was epic, honestly. But it's like the newest show that got forgotten and buried under everything, compared to some of these other shows that have resurfaced. Or have stayed alone on a streamer. Naomi C. I hated the pilot for Naomi. The characters were just quick. The the editing was odd. The build up, trying to figure out where we were, who she was. It just felt like it felt kind of like a mess. And I'm sorry if you really liked it, but I just felt like I didn't really feel like I was connecting with anything. Um, It's tough, um, but I just felt like you know I was interested in this series because the character was new and she appeared in the event, event Leviathan, and I thought that was an interesting comic story. Um, I saw I was, I was all in. You know, my rule is I'll at least watch the pilot first two episodes of every series to get a flavor feel for it. Um, but I just felt like this was not a very well done pilot. Star Girl, super. I love Star Girl. I think it was the best, most underrated show that they have done. It was all about family, heart. Um, her character was great on, as you know, Courtney Whitmore's character was great on a journey. Uh, Pat is just the greatest example of what a stepdad father figure should be as he steps up to take care of both Courtney and his son, Mike. And in every episode, they're bringing, you know, the friends in the fold and then how throughout the series is just great. But <clears throat> the pilot had everything you need. You were hooked. Great opening action scene. And then we move into, you know, the twist and the move and everything that's going on. Peacemaker. I recently rewatched all of Peacemaker. And the pilot, I'm going to give a B. Um, I remember when I first watched it, I was like, okay. <clears throat> all right. Interesting. Uh, Peacemaker is a show that was definitely more so than any of these series was designed to be binge watched because it was on a streamer and even though I did when I rewatched it I binged it um, it's not great to binge if you watch Peacemaker it definitely works better if you watch it an episode of maybe two a day if you do too many you see the patterns and the humor does weigh on you but I will say that Peacemaker re retroactively makes the Suicide Squad movie better. So that's a cool point. Um, Superman and Lois. S tier. That pi the pilot is shot so beautifully. It's made 
the first two episodes could be a mini movie almost. I mean, not only does it set up this world, but it just takes in, <coughs> excuse me, so much of just the characters, the history, and just is full of Easter eggs and fun. And you don't, and you can watch with having not had any Superman knowledge or even knowledge of this version. It doesn't matter. Like you can just start it, and it is a great just entrance into these characters, into their lives. You have, you know, them moving as a catalyst. So there's a lot going on that really feels like we're jump starting this journey with them. And then last, Gotham Knights. Now I've been very hard on this show since it was announced in details. I'm gonna give Gotham Knights a C. Um, it feels very odd. The characters, like we, they feel very foreign. They don't feel like, I mean, they're giving us a new character that we don't even know. It's supposed to be our kind of end point. But it doesn't really feel like that. I mean, the production value of the show feels very cheap. <laughs> you know, they give us this cool back cave for a couple of scenes. We watched the first two episodes um, together, me and the kids. The p part about it that was probably most interesting was we were getting the talents. So that's cool because I love the Court of Owls. But I don't know, the characters just, for a pilot, I wasn't hooked. And I wanted to be. And that's the thing is, am I hooked on these characters? You know, it's nice outside and it seems that the dogs, Crypto and Scooby, are having fun doing something outside. But that is my ranking of pilots. Not the series per whole, um, but the pilots. So let me know your thoughts. This was a special kind of experimental uh, episode. And remember, we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. You find out all of our report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report. Look up in the sky. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report.